Hey everybody, Tyler Edders here. Today we are going to take a look at how I develop on Norns locally. So Norn ships with a wonderful web-based utility that you can get to by visiting norns.local. And this is a great way to manage scripts, make edits, change files around, download new scripts. Um, I come from a development background and I'm used to working in a text editor and a terminal. So everything that I'm going to show you, you can accomplish in the, in the browser, more or less. It's just a different set of tools. Um, likewise, I'm going to be using Sublime for my text editor and iTerm2 for my terminal. And there's a whole bunch of different flavors of that as well. So Mac OS ships with its own text editor um, and its own terminal, just called Terminal. You can use that and it'll work just the same here. Uh, another thing of note is I have my Norns plugged in via uh, an Ethernet cable, and which is just USB. So that removes an entire class of problems around connecting to the Wi-Fi network or the Wi-Fi network dropping or my wife streaming way too much anime and it crashes. So um, I like... Kind of my guiding heuristic with all my development is I want to be comfortable. All right, so I've got this wired connection. My Norns is plugged into power. Um, we're just going to start this up. And I think where I want to start is um, with the terminal. So I use iTerm2. Um, and again, you can use different terminals for this. Uh, first thing to note is I am going to be working with Norns via SSH. So SSH stands for Secure Shell. It's how you can remote into a different server, typically a server or other computer from your computer. So it's like you're controlling a different computer from your computer. Um, the way I have mine set up is if we look at my SSH config file, I have set this alias host norns to hostname norns.local and user we. So this saves me a little bit of typing um, because now instead of typing SSH we at norns.local, um, I should make this bigger. even bigger. So now instead of typing SSH we at norns.local, I can just type SSH norns. You could go even more minimal than that and alias it to SSHN, or you could, you know, make your shortcut uh, really anything you want with bash aliases. I like SSH Norns because it's clear and it's short. Um, so now we can see that we're in the home we directory. Um, we can see what files and directories are in here. So here's the dust, which is where most development work happens. Uh, so if we go into code, we can see all the scripts that I have installed and I can just work with them like this. So this is the first big piece of development is having this set up. Um, so then the second big piece is being able to access maiden slash matron slash super collider from the shell and not from the browser. So I have another alias set up and let's see if I can uh, find it. I think it's in. It's in here. Yeah. Um, so this is my bash profile, which lets you store your unique user settings on whichever computer we're talking about. So in this case, I just added three aliases to this file. Uh, I can stop in 
and start n, which is going to run the stop and start scripts respectively. This is great when you're developing and you need to do a restart. Um, so I can restart my norms without physically pushing the button. And then matron, which this should probably be called maiden, um, is going to run this command. Uh, home we norns build maiden REPL, maiden REPL. And this will just launch the maiden REPL for me. So when I type that, I'm now in maiden. And this is what you see in that bottom window of norns.local. So let's just go there so we can see one for one. HTTP server waking up. Oh, um, <clears throat> so this brings us to point number two. So I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, I, you can mount your norns by a SMB or you can mount your norns. Well, there's probably a bunch of ways to do it. The way I do it is with SSHFS. So inside my bash profile here, um, or actually, no, I switched to, what's the new one called, ZCH. Inside my ZSHRC, uh, I've got this command here, alias, and So here, um, I can just type dust, and this is going to run this command for me, which is going to cd to my user directory, um, and then it's going to run sshfs, we at norns, colon, home, we, dust, uh, and that's going to mount that to dust. What that means is when I just simply type dust, give it a second, now, I can browse everything inside Dust from my Mac, which is awesome because I'm using I'm using all of I can use all my software on my Mac now because it's mounted just like you would have like a USB drive mounted more or less. Um, and this also in my config settings that I have internet sharing, so that's how um, if I want to access Norns this way, I need to hit the um, I was messing around with this. Um, right connection one. So norms dot local. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. <clears throat> So this, this matron right here, when I'm SSH into Norns, maiden, um, matron, maiden, matron, this is the same, this is the same interface. So I've pretty much just replicated everything that the browser does for you with separate programs on my computer, which is definitely a much more complicated way to do it. But again, I've worked with these tools for years and I'm most comfortable with these and I want to use these because then I get to use all my keyboard shortcuts and all my aliases and all my other dev tricks. All right, so then sort of finally um, for this first part, uh, if we go back to terminal, um, let's just make a new script just as if we were going to, um, start fresh because we had some great idea for something. So I'm just going to make a demo directory and then I'm going to make a demo.lua file. Uh, and then I'm going to launch my text editor. So here we have. What to me is pretty much my base 
canvas for starting a new script. Uh, so we could, you know, start writing our code here. Uh, Okay, so now um, if we go back to our norms, scan, here's the new demo directory we just created. Uh, launch that, we can see demo script, and then when we go into that, we see that everything just got fired up. Uh, cleared the old script, started running this new script, loaded our pmap file, gave us all the default engine commands, and then our script initialized, and then it printed hello world, which we just typed here. So uh, I closed the maiden window, but the in the browser it would have had the same the same text would have appeared there. So we could do that again, I guess. again. So what's on the left is exactly what's on the right. Now, sometimes I actually need to use the browser because this has, I think, an infinite history of commands. And sometimes I'm logging things and I need more than what this interactive REPL will give you because this is going to be constrained to just this area. You're not able to scroll up and down or go back in time. So this is a tool I sometimes use. Uh, the super collider tab is over here. You can hit tab and then you're over in the super collider area. Uh, so then um, I think the other, I guess the last piece that I'll leave you with is um, this notion of keeping a rerun function handy. Uh, and I have this in, Pretty much every script I write, I'm going to include this one little line. I think we have it in here. Uh, this is something else I do in developing a lot. I jump into old scripts that I wrote in the past and use those and copy and paste old stuff in. So I always have this rerun function which lately I've actually uh, simplified it to just R. Um, so to do that, I might do something like this actually. Um, so if you call R, it's gonna call rerun. It's just shorter to type. And rerun's going to just rerun the script from the start. So you gotta do it one last time manually. And now, uh, well, I want to change something. I can just alt tab over to um, the shell and then type R and it's going to rerun the script. And what's more is I can just hit up just like in the web REPL and I can rerun it again. Um, and you can do all your interactive programming this way. So my typical dev workflow is going to be something like I'll be over here, I'll say, you know, function, um, random number or something. This is, you know, I'll make some changes and I just command tab over, um, hit up, hit enter. And command that back. Oh, actually, I want this to be between one and one thousand. Tab over, hit up, hit enter. Now it's seven fifteen, and then it creates this really 
The whole goal is to create as tight of a feedback loop as you possibly can so that you can get into this flow. Because if every single step you're trying to, you have to kind of pause and shift gears and think about context or touch the norns or move something or whatever, it breaks my flow. So I like to just really quickly boop, 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 bounce back and forth. Um, so that's the development flow. And then I think the last part that I'll add is uh, just Git. So since we have the, the norns mounted on the Mac, I can use um, any Git client that I want. And a lot of the time I use command line, but lately I've been using merge. So uh, we can init a repository here. Um, so sublime merge is like sort of like the native GitHub client you could download or um, what's it called? Power. There's a bunch of different clients out there. Uh, I like this one because it's reliable. It's from the same developers that did um, Sublime Code. So it feels good to use the two together. So if I go to demo, um, now I can see you know, everything that I've done in the past. I can push and pull from here. Uh, this is how I work with pull requests. So I can pull a branch down, compare changes, merge it together. And all of the code is living on the Norns, but then all of my development software is just running on my Mac. And I think that's about it. Hope this was helpful. Um, I'll post some links and snippets and stuff in the description. Thanks for watching. Gigi says goodbye. Say bye, Gigi.